Hi, and welcome to the Stock Scores Market Minutes for July 11th, 2016. Let's talk about how stocks react to news. Have you ever wondered why stocks react negatively to bad news on some occasions and then positive, positively to good news other times, and then sometimes good news is good news? Well, the price action into the news determines how the market will react. And so you have to look at what have the expectations been coming into a big news event. Overbought markets, those that have gone up for some time, are ripe to listen to bad news. They've already priced in a lot of good news. And by the same token, oversold markets are ripe to listen to good news. So, for example, if we take a chart of the S&P 500 over the last year or so, when you get stocks that have fallen sharply into support or risen into resistance, they're going to react differently to news. Down here, good news is going to be good news. Up here, good news is probably going to be ignored and bad news is going to have um, a real value to the market. And the reason is because the trend into that news has already priced in a lot of good news and therefore the market's only worried about what they might have missed, about what could be negative. And so here, in the last little while, we've had a pretty sharp run up over the last couple of weeks, but we've come into long-term resistance, which means that good news, if it comes out, won't get a whole lot of attention, but if some bad news comes out, it can cause a reversal. Now, this doesn't mean that just because a stock is coming into resistance, it is going to reverse. It means that if there is bad news coming into resistance, it will get more attention than it would get down near support. All right, let's look at this week's market analysis. Here's the S&P 500 30-day 60-minute chart. Great comeback off of the Brexit vote, which started back in here. We've continued to see strength on Friday with the employment number out of the U.S., which was particularly strong after a very weak number in May, uh, which came out in June. Um, and there is resistance. So we're right at resistance. We actually went slightly through it at the end of uh, the day on Friday. My feeling is the market is ripe for a pullback, given that the gains it has made into resistance are significant. And so I would watch for that. No sign of any weakness yet. This is a bullish chart. But anytime I see markets rally consecutively for a number of days into resistance, I'm always watchful for a pullback. Now, in the longer term chart, we have this breakout here on the weekly, but we have not yet broken through these highs and so again, the market is coming right into resistance where it should get stuck. It doesn't mean it can't break out longer term, but I think in the next week, it probably stalls simply because we've had a good run up over the last week or two into that resistance zone. On the Russell 2000, of course, we've talked about how the Russell broke the downward trend, had a little pullback there, and it looks like it wants to resume. To me, this is the market that has better upside potential because it is still far away from its all-time highs, unlike the S&P 500. And so I like this market better, but again, it's dealing with this resistance and it's going to deal with this resistance. So it's got some price levels to fight through, but I do generally like that chart. On the Canadian market, we also have a bullish short-term trend coming into this resistance and then longer term this resistance. Unlike the S&P 500, however, at the end of the day on Friday, it actually sold off. And I think that was due to weakness in oil. And that is the key with the Canadian market, of course, is that oil is a big part of the Canadian economy. So I'm a little bit more cautious with the Canadian market just because of how oil was behaving last week. We'll talk about oil in a moment. On the um, longer term chart, we've got a nice flag break. So we had an upward trend, a flag, and this week a break. So that is a sign that the market wants to go higher, provided oil can hold up. We've got that short term concern about oil, which is not yet a big deal, but it is something to watch for. On the longer term, or sorry, on the TSX Venture chart, the small caps, nice long term upward trend, kind of at the top of its trend right now, the top of its channel. But this is driven by gold. Gold has been strong. And so as long as gold is strong, this market should be doing well. I would be cautious with gold. We'll talk about that in a moment. On the Treasury side, you see that real ramp up here as uh, the Treasury's uh, U.S. bonds have really gone up quickly, I would say parabolically. And that means that there's a lot of risk for a pullback in bonds. Of course, as this goes up parabolically, that means interest rates go down parabolically. Um, I think we're due for a pullback in the treasury market, not to say that the upward trend will be broken. We've got nice rising bottoms. That is a bull market. It's just gone up too quickly. And just like it did here, it can eventually then go sideways or pull back in the near term to bring it back to the trend line. 
U.S. dollar, um, you know, despite the fact that the U.S. economy is, is stronger than most in the world, it is not really doing all that well. And that's largely because the expectation for a rise in interest rates has diminished. Now, on Friday, of course, we had that strong employment number that may bring the discussion of an interest rate raise in the U.S. to the forefront again. It was kind of put on the back burner after Brexit. But now there is uh, a reason, I suppose, that the U.S. economy is strong enough to warrant a rate increase. And that's probably why we had a little bit of a pop in the U.S. dollar last week. It's still far from a bull market in the U.S. dollar, but it has broken this downward trend. It has been building rising bottoms. So there is some sign there that the U.S. dollar wants to go higher. And that could also hurt commodities like oil and gold. Speaking of gold, there is that strong upward trend in gold. With the uncertainty that was going on in Europe, money has gone to gold and it has done very well. It is coming into some resistance here. It's not quite there yet. I'm sorry, I drew that line very crooked. You get the idea. It's right around 133. So we've got um, a little bit more upside in gold before it hits that resistance. But I would be very cautious initiating new positions in gold. If you have gold stocks, no reason to sell them until they show a breakdown. But I would not want to initiate new positions in gold because the risk is high right now. And here is an interesting chart. I think one that could be the canary in the coal mine for the market because the upward trend line has been broken and we're now starting to see a little bit of a pickup in velocity to the downside and that could bring a retest of these lows. And so while oil hasn't been really strong to the downside, it is starting to gather some momentum. On Thursday, there was a weak uh, drawdown number in oil inventories weaker than or less strong than expected and um, that caused some selling pressure in oil we may see that pick up next week and that could be the catalyst for a pullback in stocks on the fear side we're really at all-time lows we have broken through support it's a little bit deceptive when we talk about support and resistance with this chart because the uh, vix chart is or the vxx chart is based on futures and of course there's a decay of value in time over the futures price so you can't read a lot in the fact that this is broken support nonetheless it is at all-time lows it is very low and that means investors are complacent and that often comes just before a big pop so you know here we had complacency as well and then we had that big jump and, you know again no sign that the market wants to pull back just there's a lot of reasons why it should as markets pull into or rise into resistance as there is some of that weakness in oil there could be some turmoil still to come in July but at this point nothing in there just watch for it be cautious so my rating then neutral on U.S. stocks long term simply because they are coming into resistance but the trend is up the trend is bullish Canadian stocks same sort of story we've got an upward trend but I've rated it neutral because we did have that little bit of weakness coming in which could negate uh, or could be driven by some weakness in the oil market gold bullish on both time frames but I would say that oil, is, or pardon me, gold is risky and you want to be very cautious with gold right now because of the parabolic trend. I've put a bearish rating on both time frames in oil. It has been slowly inching lower and the long term downward trend remains intact. Stocks have impressed with the strength, but they must now deal with that long term resistance, which is likely to bring out some sellers. Oil is rolling over and that may be a catalyst for market weakness. Gold is very strong, but also very risky. Fear is low, but that could erupt if some of these market risks start to materialize. Well, that has been the Stock Scores Market Minutes for July 11th, 2016. Have a great week in the market and trade well.